It has been far too long since I've gone through and tasted all of my barrels. So, let's taste them and uh, see if they've been good barrels and behaving. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and these are all the barrels that I currently have full. I've got a bunch of jars macerating all over the place as well, but these are kind of my babies, and I haven't been through to uh, see how they're growing up for quite some time. So I figured, why not bring you guys along for the ride, and uh, we'll, we'll see how things are going. Do I need to switch things out and change them from barrel to barrel? Do I need to put them in a different part of the workshop so they're warmer or cooler? Do I need to get something out of the barrel? Or maybe, maybe, just maybe, I just need to chill and be patient. <laughs> uh, let's get stuck in and give it a go, shall we? These are in no particular order, they're just the way I dumped them on the bench, but let's go from, well, my right to left, but your left to right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, love child first, and I have to admit that the last time I tried to open this tap, it started cracking. So I'm not gonna touch that anymore. That terrifies me. It would be heartbreaking to come in here one day and find all of this on the floor. Uh, so, I'm just gonna give this a little love tap and um, we're gonna use a straw as a thief because that's all I have. This might take some time. <laughs> Three drops. Love Child, if you don't know, is kind of like a bourbon and uh, rum mix up. So it's corn and molasses, funnily enough. And when this came off the still, I thought it was amazing. And then I put it into a barrel and instantly it got this giant hit of kind of like an umami vegetable stock like note. Um, and I was kind of worried about it. I didn't know if it was a mess up in cuts and I just didn't taste it. Didn't know if it was something funny with the barrel. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And the weird thing is, as I've tasted it over time, it almost seems to come back and disappear. And I think it is based on the temperature. Uh, through summer, when it was quite warm here, that mostly went away. It's getting colder now, so uh, I'm a little bit worried about trying this. I haven't tried it since it's gotten colder. This is starting to smell freaking awesome. I gotta say, this is smelling exactly how I hoped it would smell uh, when I first came up with the idea for it. It smells like a big, sweet, sticky bourbon with a little bit of a rum twist to it. Exactly what I was hoping for. Not a lot of like straight up cherry. It's kind of like that weird, I, I don't quite know how to describe it, but red apple and hay and like dusty corn all mixed together. And that is one of the, the tasting notes that I really love in a lot of bourbons that I try. Lots of that on the nose. Not a lot of funk in terms of the rum, but just that, that kind of mellow, almost banana-y, but not quite banana-y influence. More like a, like a, a pretty drinking rum, like a, I don't know, something like a Bacardi, I guess. Definitely not like Smith and Cross. <laughs> Jamaican style esteriness. Hmm. Okay, so the first three quarters on the palate is exactly what I want it to be. All of those tasting notes that I just described are coming through as well. I'm starting to get some of the French, this is French oak, by the way. Starting to get some of the French oak influence really starting to settle on the palate. It's getting slightly astringent, but I don't necessarily dislike that. The problem I have, the issue I have here, is that that, that kind of like dense umaminess has come back a little bit. Like I said, it's gotten colder here, so I was kind of expecting that. That seems to be the trajectory that it's taken. So uh, it was really high, it sort of faded off a little bit, and then as things got warmer, it dipped more, and then as things get colder, it kind of comes back up. How? I have no idea. That's just the trend I'm noticing. Here's the issue. It's starting to get a little bit astringent. I like that. It's also got that stock flavor coming back. I wonder, I wonder if I should have pulled this at the end of summer rather than going into winter. 
Now I've got options. I can either take it out of this barrel and put it into something else, or I could ride winter out and try and get that umami-ness to sort of dip a little bit again before the astringency really comes back. Or I guess I could take it inside and try and like warm it up inside for maybe a week and try it again there. I'm torn, I'm really torn. You know what? Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that because it's colder, the influence of the barrel is also gonna slow down. I'm gonna let this ride, but I will taste it. I'm gonna make an effort to taste it like probably every three weeks just to make sure that that astringent, like full on French oak thing doesn't overtake it too much. Okay, barrel number one sorted. We're gonna let that ride for a little bit. <laughs> All right, uh, barrel number, well, two in the line. This is the 100% corn that I made a year ago and it has been sitting in a barrel, but not this barrel for a year. Literally yesterday, I pulled it out of the barrel that it was in to use that barrel for something else. I'm one of the second use bourbon barrel. That's coming up next week, you'll see that. Uh, but what I've done is popped it into this barrel here, which is, this, this barrel is super special to me uh, because I, I made this with Ben. Really, uh, I got in the way in the workshop. <laughs> ben made the barrels and I filmed it. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, 100% worth checking out. Uh, I will put, it's, it's this video here, and I'll put a link for that down in the description below. Uh, so the, the corn came out of the other barrel, into this barrel, uh, and this barrel is a matrix of everything that Ben makes. <laughs> so each of the separate staves going down this way are, uh, I can't remember which order it's in, but one's uh, light, medium, heavy toast, and then we charred it the opposite direction from kind of like one up to about three and a half, four on one side. Anyway, enough chatter. Let's um, woo, get a little bit of this delicious liquid, shall we? I have really high hopes for this. Another year in this barrel and I'm gonna be very happy, I think. Uh, but interestingly enough, I also have exactly the same liquid that came out of blending for that. I put into a jar and aged with some toasted and Chard is the word I'm looking for here, staves. It is the same wood, well, as, as same as it can be. Uh, if you don't know guys, Ben lovingly hand makes these for me uh, in his workshop from the same aged wood that's been aged in a yard in Kentucky for 48 months, I believe, which is pretty freaking special, especially at the moment with the oak shortage. Uh, so let's taste them next to each other. Let me get a little sample of this. Badmo barrel version, uh, Chase the Craft oak stag version. Interesting. Unsurprisingly, in some ways, uh, this version, the oak stag version, has more of the straight up oak characteristic, which is really contributing to that same note that I said that I loved in this, that kind of caramel sweetness with the slight appliness and the almost hay-likeness, bringing that dusty corn sort of thing out. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. But there is just no substitution for an actual barrel. Micro-oxidation through the wood. There's something freaking magical about it. This is good. It's heading in the right direction. The oak flavor is much higher but all of the other influence on the, oak, uh, on the spirit is less than this. And it's only been a year, I, I only been a year. Uh, so this is good, I'm really happy with it, and I think it's gonna continue to get better uh, with age. This is shaping up to be much better over the long term. A little bit more complexity, a bit more fruit coming out. The body of the spirit is higher, like it, it's fuller, it's richer, it's creamier, and either because of that, or as well as that, the kind of the alcohol presence has been altered in this as well. If I had a critique of this spirit at the moment, it would be that it is heading a little bit too pretty for me, a little bit too barrel candy and vanilla, and I'm not getting any contribution in terms of the higher char, um, 
like spice, like clove, cinnamon, charred wood <laughs> flavors, uh, which is another reason why I chose this barrel to switch into this one because it is a higher charred, uh, more intensely treated barrel. And I'm hoping over the next year that'll trend in the direction I want it to. I need a dump bucket or I'm gonna be very drunk at uh, 9.30 in the morning. Mm. Next barrel. This is the Munich Safety Net and it's been in this barrel since November last year. So it's got a little bit of age on it, not heaps. Uh, this is one of the Safety Net recipes. This video here, if you wanna go check it out. Once again, links down there. Uh, if you haven't run into the Safety Net series yet, the idea is to create recipes that give a good result while encouraging people to just jump into the world of all grain mashing and, and whiskey distillation without the stress. Basically it gives you the giant safety net of having sugar as well, where the, the, the grains, actual mashed all grain grains as part of the mash gives the flavor. So let's give it a nudge. Ooh. That is, okay, I'm getting serious cappuccino vibes off this. Um, coffee, sweetness, like a little bit of vanillariness from the oak, uh, and that kind of like biscuity, intense grain flavor from the Munich is coming through as well. That's, that is uh, surprising. Not what I thought was gonna happen to this at all. I thought it was gonna be much more clean and just biscuit, like a biscuity single malt that was a little bit thin because of the sugar. Nope. <laughs> okay, you know what? Erin is working inside. I need to pause this video. I'm gonna go get her feedback on this because I can't believe it's actually that good. <laughs> Aaron, can you taste this and tell me if I'm drunk already? <laughs> I just ate salami. Oh, yum. Salami for breakfast. Breakfast of champions. Mm. Feels good with salami. What is it? Does it taste like cappuccino to you? No. <laughs> no? Am I drunk? <laughs> Probably at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That's really yummy. A little bit after tasty, maybe good to call it mocha. It's delicious. Um, do you get like roasty, toasty, kind of like almost like um, whole grain bread out of the toaster kind of vibes? I definitely get toasty. Yeah. Toasty and syrupy. <laughs> That's really good though, eh? It is really good. Yeah. Um. So Aaron drank the last of the whiskey, but uh, smelling the empty glass, man, I totally disagree with it. I really think this tastes or smells like, smelling it more, it smells like fresh ground coffee beans. But hey, that's like, that brings out a good point, right? All of this stuff is subjective. Everyone is gonna experience these things differently. There's no right or wrong on any of this. Um, it's just, just the way it rolls. But what am I gonna do with this barrel? I'm gonna do absolutely freaking nothing. That is going exactly in the direction that I couldn't have even hoped it would go in. Way better than I thought it would be. Uh, and I'm gonna let that go for some time longer. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's actually skip this, because this is the Isla barrel. I'm gonna do that last. Because once I taste this, I may not be able to taste anything else. Let's do the mongrel whiskey, shall we? You can probably tell that I'm kind of into these barrels. I got five of the damn things lined up, another one down there and a couple more over there to fill up. What is the deal? Uh, if you haven't heard about these yet, you may have been under a rock when it comes to distilling, but I won't hold that against you. The general idea is as you scale a barrel down, as it gets smaller and smaller, the surface area of the bar barrel in relation to the amount of liquid in the barrel skyrockets, which is great if you just kind of want to oak tea bag your product and get a lot of oak flavor in there. It's not so great if you want to let it go for a long amount of time and actually age rather than just soak up oak flavor. Uh, that's what these do. They're designed to mimic the same amount of surface area to liquid ratio as a 200 liter barrel. And on top of that, Ben has access to absolutely amazing oak. Uh, like honestly, the, the oak that goes into these barrels is the envy of commercial distillers at the moment. There's a bit of an oak shortage. It's not easy to get. It's just, as far as I'm concerned, a fact that properly aged, and the longer you age it up to a point is better, properly treated in terms of toasting and charring oak 
just makes a giant difference to your products. So if you're interested in these, uh, you can check out Badmo's website. There's a link down there. They're hard to get, they're in huge demand. Sign up for the newsletter. Uh, if you're in New Zealand or Australia, we sell them on our website. Same deal, sign up to the newsletter. At the time of recording, I think we have three in stock, but you can sign up for the newsletter. Every time we get a shipment, we'll notify you. And if, for whatever reason, uh, investing in these kinds of barrels, or you can't get them, or it's just not your thing, doesn't work for you, uh, then you can get exactly the same oak in the uh, maturation sticks, which you can buy at chasethecraft.com, which once again comes from Ben. Giant shout out to Ben for Badmo Barrels. Woo! Bloop, 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 bloop. So you can tell from the sucking sounds that these barrels are making that it's gotten significantly colder around here. There's like negative pressure in them right now. Uh, but here we go. So what was that? Mungrel whiskey. Ooh. It's like plums and pears. I'm into that. Uh, so if you don't know guys, the idea with this was this video here. I basically just had a bunch of grain sitting around that wasn't being used, like dregs from a bunch of different things. So I just made a mash with all of the things uh, and put it into this barrel. It's smelling pretty good. Oh, totally forgot that that's peated as well. <laughs> okay, um, not as peaty as this will be, but there is some peat to it. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. Uh, the first three quarts of the profile on this is really nice. I love that kind of orchard fruit vibe. Uh, I love the grainy flavor. The peat is subdued compared to what I would normally be into in terms of, it's not a, like a full on peated whiskey, it's a whiskey with peat. Does that make sense? Um, but it has a little bit of a thinness on the end. And I'm hoping that more time in the barrel is gonna fix that up. I think it's, it's only been in here since uh, October-ish last year. I'm hoping that the barrel's gonna fix that with another year, two years in the barrel. That's my guess. So I don't think I'm gonna do anything with that as well. Getting no adverse flavors or um, mouthfeel or no astringency, anything like that at all. It has that same kind of empty finish as some of the cheaper blended scotches. It's definitely not terrible. Um, and I think hopefully the barrel will fill some of that in with some of the barrel candy kind of aspects later on. Hmm. Let's break into the safety net bourbon. This is a, another safety net recipe. So this one is trying to imitate a single malt kind of scotch style recipe. This one's trying to imitate a bourbon, same exact idea. This video here, once again, you know it, links down there. Ooh. Okay. Cherry. And baking spice. Uh, this one is shaping up to be a lot more punchy. Cherry, baking spice, a little bit of astringency already, actually, and in this, it really works. I like that. That does not taste like a sugar wash <laughs> at all. I think, I think the safety net thing is, is doing its job to kind of mask the, the sugar up a little bit. The barrel is doing awesome things. I love, I, I love the contrast between this and this. This is the, the soft, creamy, sweet, sticky, candy-like bourbon side of things. This is the, like, heading towards the single barrel, high proof, like, barrel proof, um, aggressive bourbons that I, in a lot of ways, prefer to this. So I'm hoping this starts to pick up some of this aspect, and it might be, it might be, that blending these two in like a year or two's time might be the sweet spot. There's nothing to worry about with this barrel for now. I'm happy to let it do its thing. Uh, maybe, maybe, well, actually, definitely in summer, I'm going to check this just to make sure uh, that it is not going too far down that astringent, spicy, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg kind of road. I don't want it to go too far down that way. Uh, it could also be, actually thinking about it, it could be that because it's a little bit, the, the spirit itself is a little bit thinner, a little bit less intense in terms of the, the corn flavor compared to this one, it could be uh, that the spirit is not hiding or masking the barrel contribution as much as this would. Does that make sense? 
So I just need to, I, I need to keep an eye on this one for sure. Hmm. Before we get into the next barrel, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much for being the people that support us day in, day in, month in, month out. If you don't know, Patreon is a platform that allows you to directly support the channel, if you so wish. Uh, you don't need to, guys, obviously, because these videos are always going to be here for free. And as long as you guys are enjoying the videos and watching them, uh, that allows me to do what I do, which is awesome. But if you do want to sign up, you get a few little perks, like the... Uh, the regular Q&As, and I got in trouble with a production schedule where I needed a video to make, and this video was suggested by the Patreons. So thank you, team. Let's hit the Isle of Safety net. I'll be real with you guys, this is my baby. This is the one that I'm excited to taste. Uh, let's give it a nudge. Ooh, yes. That peat is on point. It's peat halfway between Lefroig, but it's more, it's a little bit more kind of unctuous and sweet than Lefroig. More like Lagavulin, no, not Lagavulin, Ardbeg. Halfway between Lefroig and Ardbeg in terms of the peat, kind of like the, the overall nose, actually. I am not mad at that. I am not mad at that at all. So here's the, here's the original uh, safety net recipe, you know the deal down there. Uh, and then uh, after it was in the barrel for a little while, the barrel wasn't full, so I tasted it, decided kind of what it needed and what it didn't need, and then tried to make another batch of whiskey to balance that out. Uh, and that was this video here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that that was quite successful, because now it's heading in the direction that I wanted it to be. Sweet, pretty, fruity single malt up front, and then as you swallow, it takes a big dip down into serious peat territory. Uh, and after you swallow, the peat ramps up more and more and more. Like I'm tasting more peat now than I did when I first swallowed, if that makes sense. Uh, that's, that's shaping up really well. And I have to imagine that I'm only gonna get more and more of that fruit and the sweet in the beginning half of the scotch to kind of push the how do, you, how do I explain it? To push the PD experience further down the timeline. So the more sweetness, the more fruit I get, the more that's gonna take up like into as you swallow, and then the peat's gonna come out afterwards. That, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. I was a little bit worried about this barrel uh, because it was a new oak barrel, and I was trying to go after a style of whiskey that is traditionally almost always ex-bourbon barrels. Right now, it's doing exactly what I want it to do. Do I need to watch this? Yes, I will watch it. I don't think I need to th stress about it at all through winter. Uh, I will check it halfway through summer, I think is the plan. So if you have things maturating in your shed, cupboard, basement, whatever it happens to be, uh, I would totally recommend you doing either this every now and again, like pull out a bunch and taste them, or just go through and taste, you know, like every week, taste two or three things. Make sure you're keeping a track on what's happening because I subscribe to the idea that these things are like my, like my second tier children <laughs> in that, that you don't just stick them in a barrel and forget about them until they're suddenly wonderful. You have to kind of raise them and make sure they're doing what they are supposed to be doing. And if they're not, you need to discipline them, to nudge them in a different direction. Uh, when they reach their full potential, you need to kind of capitalize on that quickly. That's a terrible metaphor for children, but I think you get the idea. Uh, anyway, I need to take uh, the two PC ones, uh, the Mongrel and the Isla into Erin because I have a sneaky suspicion she's gonna love these. So let me top a couple of glasses up uh, and we will exit this video with Erin's thoughts on these videos. Thanks for watching team. I'll catch you next time. I'll keep on chasing and I'll see you next week. Erin. I have more whiskey for you. <laughs> Has drinking whiskey turned into a responsibility instead of a luxury? Yes, time of the day. Yes. <laughs> mm. I bring you gifts of peat. It does smell very peaty. It's really nice. I like the other one better though. This is like newer. It needs some more age, uh, yeah. but I think that is going to head halfway between Lefroy and Ardbeg. Like the peat profile. It's no Lefroy. <laughs> Try this one. It's yummy. <laughs> Do I get more than yummy? 
Yeah, that's the... Ah, it smells so good. <laughs> I feel very zoomed and focused on. I don't like it. <laughs> that's delicious. That's what? like sitting outside and having s'mores over the campfire. Delicious. I love it. That's oh, yummy. like smoky marshmallow? Yeah. It's yeah, I get, smoky yeah, marshmallow. yeah, yeah. I get that. Brunch. <laughs> Brunch is done.